Good afternoon and welcome back to Koh Samui. My name is Paddy. I'm currently kind of stranded here because of the whole COVID stuff. And um, look, it's been raining for a couple of days and today the sun's come out and it's glorious and I thought it'd be a perfect afternoon to explore a little bit of the culture of Koh Samui. dozens of temples and I've visited quite a few already. I've been to the top of the mountains, I've been in the jungles to see the stone magical gardens, um, but today I'm going to go to three places I haven't been that I'm really excited to check out and I'm inviting you to join me today. We're going to go to a red temple, we're going to go to a 18 armed goddess statue and then we're going to end it all here at the big Buddha and the barking dog. So come and join me as we discover the cultural side of Koh Samui. Okay, I've just arrived. I'm the only person here. There's no other cars or bikes and no other shoes. And before we go in, let's just take a look because I, I can, I, I think this is gonna be amazing just from the outside. Yes, it's a red temple. Um, however, the Thai translation means um, serpent stone temple or snake stone temple. So it's actually, a temple themed around serpents and snakes and you know usually you get these these at the front of every temple this is the uh, Buddhist serpent it's like a three-headed snake monster that protects the entrance to the temples however just looking out here at the front I've never seen them before but they morph into elephants at the front which is really incredible that's certainly a unique thing I've never seen that before and yes it's brushed concrete that seems to be painted however all of the sculptures and decorations on the outsides are made of clay terracotta clay which obviously gives it that red color and they've matched it by painting the concrete the same as well as these tiles on the floor and um, they have these really amazing structures i've never seen these before and they're all around the temple in every corner i'm not quite sure what they represent because there's no snakes or anything wrapped around the top and I've never seen those before or maybe I've never really paid attention but they stick out quite clear here and they go all the way around the back and the detail is unbelievable now if you're thinking to yourself why why is it red because obviously we visited the white temple in Chiang Rai and I've been to the blue temple as well in Chiang Rai they're those colors for different reasons so you might be thinking well why is it red so the reason why it's red is simply because they haven't finished <laughs> they haven't finished it yet it cost millions and millions of baht to get to this stage and now they're fundraising for more artists to come and finish the paint job uh, the red is just the clay and the base and uh, the, you can see that they've painted the, the gate white and gold and maybe when they have the money and the funds they will employ people to come and paint it in that theme maybe and then it really will be spectacular but even without the paint this thing this is incredible i mean just look at the detail of the figurines of buddha and you know the the mischievous monkeys and the incredible statues of the different types of goddess goddesses and goddesses and angels and things like that details of the toenails and the dress and the spirals and the flowers and this is incredible and it's not even finished. It's nowhere near finished really. I haven't even started the paint job. And I really like the couple, they have like two, um, you know, spiritual figures working together, holding the roof up, which is just a really cool little touch. They seem to be working together, pity backing, helping each other, keep the roof up. Obviously it's just an artistic effect, but it's fantastic. And, um, yeah, so let's go inside and see what we can find. And luckily there's nobody around. Okay, 
this is special place. This is a special temple. And the only thing about the inside and the grounds itself that I can mark it down for, if we're grading temples against each other for some reason, it has to be just the fact that the road is right here. You see? This is the ring road. So there's cars and noisy motorbikes. So there's not much of a tranquil feeling to it, but the in terms of the decoration and the artwork and the handcraft and skill and downright genius that's gone into making this, this is up there. Um, so, you know, once you've come inside, the first thing you're greeting, greeted with is this incredible gold uh, statue of the Buddha here in his throne almost. And he's surrounded by incredible 3D hand sculpted clay figurines depicting all moments through history of his life including um, towards the end of his life and when he got enlightenment under the tree and the battles and all of the history that you learn in Buddhism about his life is all portrayed with the angels and the animals and the warriors and the serpents and everything um, and you see them in every temple pretty much but they're normally painted on the wall this is painstaking craftsmanship and when you get super close you can see just like every knife edge and every tiny little whisper I mean just look at this detail in the in the birds feathers here of this giant chicken that this guy's riding and you know you've really got to just take the time to look carefully and look everywhere every flower every plant every Every figurine is just detailed to a crazy amount. And um, I mean, I just love the way that they come out of the walls. Like this guy here is just, you know, the wall is, 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 you can feel the clay and then it goes flat and then boom. And then just, you know, look at the detail in the, in the chinks in his armor, his belt, and even the fingernails in his hands, it's just, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It really is a fantastic little temple. <laughs> you know, I've driven past this a dozen times and gone, ooh, and never stopped. If you see it, stop. I'll leave the link in the description. And if you come nice and early when there's not a lot of traffic, I bet this place is even more special. But this is up there even though it's not even finished. <laughs> Incredible place. Oh baby, I love your madness. It's so incredibly beautiful. Oh, you shine like gold, so selfless to all. And wild like an Okay, welcome to the next place and again nobody here five o'clock in the afternoon and um, you can hear that this temple complex there's about four or five temples here all together and they're doing chanting on the megaphone so that's added atmosphere so this is the whole complex here seems to be floating on water and th let me just show you this this is the the highlight of the whole thing um, you come through these blue gates onto this tiled bridge to reveal this 18-handed goddess called Guan Yin. And in each hand she's holding different things. I can see keys, bars of gold, apples, 
and uh, different Buddhist relics, lotus flowers and things like that, as well as the Buddhist wheel. And then both her hands at the top, placed on top of her head is a statue, a gold statue of Buddha. And uh, with her other hand she's holding a vase and she's also praying cross-legged over a uh, water dragon which is wrapped around, it seems to be like a waterfall. And then there's a few other disciples at the bottom. <laughs> this is just incredible. It's, it's huge as well. I mean, I can't really get you the scale, but this thing is massive. And by far the nicest thing about it, other than the fact that I'm the only person here, again, is uh, I'll try to find an area that doesn't have bird poop on it, but um, maybe if I lean here. <laughs> The best thing is this: the, the the temple complex is all on the water here, and you can see that this temple is seems to be they're giving the illusion that it's floating in a giant lotus flower, a little bit like Talay Noi back in Patalung when we saw those pink lotus flowers on that trip. Kind of got that feeling, but like a man-made feeling. Let's get a little bit closer. So when you come around the back here, you have the dragon's body wrapped around here and he seems to be hanging on and you can see her incredible gold detailed dress and head headscarf and there's plenty of fish knocking about I mean just look at all these swirls and little whirlpools of bubbles here and stuff so they're, they're alive and well <laughs> and I've just seen there's another massive statue of a, a big fat Buddha thing, I'll go check that out in a second. I don't know what that one is, I'll have to Google that for you. And look at the little kitty. Sabadika! Oh, you live inside, huh? Okay. Wow, but yes. I just got a, so much admiration for the creativity and artist, you know, freedom that Buddhism allows. They really are extremely creative and uh, just, just wild. We're just outside the Big Buddha, however, um, it's just behind me down there, the sun's setting behind there, so we'll try and get in before it shuts. But uh, the most interesting part, to be honest, about coming here is this visual storytelling uh, through this um, sculpture, a uh, piece of art, basically. So this is a really famous Thai fable. Um, Thai story and um, you see it in books and the kids when I was a teacher the kids learn this story in their Buddhism class once a week and I remember learning about this and seeing the visuals and then recently um, some of my friend just told me that a little bit more of the story because I, I didn't really get the gist of the whole thing but basically and I'm paraphrasing obviously but you see this little fella here right so he he used to come down to the rocks near the ocean every day and his wife was always like, where are you going? What are you doing? And he was like, I'm just gonna go, you know, write a poem and play my flute. <laughs> she was like, all right, you do that every night. So one day she went down to follow him and it turns out he was cheating on his wife with a beautiful mermaid who used to swim up to the rocks every evening. And the wife is behind me here and you can see she's not very happy. She's pretty pissed off about the whole situation. She's like, what have you done? How could you do this to me? And uh, I think he's got his friend for moral support who's like, no, 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 
No, he, he didn't do anything. He was just, you know, they were just friends. Um, and the mermaid's in the distance. She's keeping her distance. She's not getting involved because the wife looks proper mad. Um, and she's like, no, darling, I just come here every day and I just sunbathe. You know, I've seen him before, but, you know, I'm pretty sure nothing's happening. <laughs> Meanwhile, they had a child who is riding a uh, horse slash dragon monster thing. And uh, there's also an elder, elder here who seems to be teaching everybody, um, you know, the rules of marriage and what should be done to resolve this situation. Um, and to be honest, I don't blame him because the mermaid's beautiful and his wife is a little bit of a hag, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> Um, and this, so this area here, this little sculpture park, is just next to the car park. And there's a few, you know, little families here taking pictures. Um, because it's a famous story in Thai culture. Um, and uh, there's just a bunch of fishermen here drinking Lao Kao, painting, painting their fishing boats. So it's quite a nice little spot to come. Um, especially at sunset. I mean, look, it's a really cute little family here and stuff. And just an interesting part of Thai culture. I wanted to share with you the story of the cheating man and the mermaid and the angry wife. <laughs> anyway, let's head into the uh, into the Big Buddha. Okay, so we made it in time. <laughs> I saw the monk coming up the stairs and he started to close the gates. And I was like, oh, can I, can I be the last person? And he was like, okay, fine. <laughs> so it's just me. I'm the only person on the platform here underneath this humongous gold Big Buddha. And so what I can see on the back of the statue seems to be a long Thai fishing boat, um, a ceremonial one, and um, the huge Buddhist wheel spread covered in gold across the shoulders and the back of the head. And you can see the statue from so many parts of the island. Um, and if you're thinking, wow, you know, 360 views of the island with the beaches. Paddy, get the drone out, get the drone out. <laughs> um, we are directly underneath the landing strip of the airport. In fact, the airport just lands. Uh, the airplanes land just on the, the other side of those trees. And um, actually the, the other day when we were jet skiing and we came past here, a plane screamed over the top of us and we all shouted, wow. So there's no chance of getting an epic drone shot, unfortunately, but... Um, so yeah, what you can see while I'm here, actually, I can show you is... This is um, Banrak Beach, which is where I'm staying. And there's actually a pagoda up on that hill, I didn't see that before. And then there's the, the inland mountains. Let's continue around the back. Although the back seems to be obstructed here. Wow. Um, no, we can see a little bit. We can see out towards the north side of the beaches. The sun's going down, so there's a lot of sun glare. I apologise for that. Um, and it's low tide. Um, it's not a magnificent view, to be honest, at this time of day. Still, <laughs> still pretty impressive, if you ask me. And um, this is an interesting experience, just whilst I'm talking, to be at this incredible place by myself. I think in the afternoon, this is when most people would come, because you escape the midday heat. Oh, this is interesting. You've got all these bells, as usual, around the temple, and then here you have a spirit house in the forest area. There are tiny miniature statues of Buddha there, and so a ghost must live on this um, little outcropping here. Um, there's lots of ghosts on this island, and uh, I can even see the 18-handed goddess from here in the distance, so we're not far away at all. And then you can see the incredible Banrak million dollar houses overlooking the whole area. Beautiful. Okay. We finished. Um, Big Buddha's closed and um, the sun's heading down. Now, I will just quickly show you 
um, the sunset spot. Um, a lot of people go to a bar called the Sunset Bar and overpay for drinks and sit um, in a confined space. But this little road here that you can see these people driving motorcycles to, um, it's a stone break um, that helps, I think, set the foundations for the Big Buddha area. And it's a little secret local spot to come, grab drinks from Seven, park your little motorbike, sit on the, um, the, the stone walls and watch the sunset uninterrupted probably the best view for sunset on the island i've had a really great afternoon showing you around to these three little places i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you enjoyed learning a little bit i'm sorry i'm not like you know the history channel and i don't know everything about everything but um i researched as much as i could um and um i just love i just love afternoons in thailand you know look at the colorful wooden boats and the and the uh, thai guys you know debating about how much bait do they need for the night and how much whiskey do they need for the squid fishing. I love it. Anyway, let me go show you the uh, sunset spot. Okay, bit of a fail. <laughs> I came around the corner and parked up and then um, I saw a couple of walkers. They've walked from halfway across the other side of the island and their teachers uh, in Bangkok and um, they watched the show and we started chatting away and you know 20 minutes later the storm's blown in and <laughs> it's like proper windy and there's gonna be no sunset epic fail anyway um, that was the end of the video I was trying to I was gonna do an epic time-lapse for an epic sunset but it never happened but there you go I've had that's what happens on Samui <laughs> all right next video will be on this island still and probably for the next few weeks but we are going to go to Koh Tao and we are going to go back to Koh Phangan eventually I just need to uh, chill out a little bit more on Samui I haven't finished this place so see you in the next one bye